What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Who You Got With. Mello. And Rado. It's a sports podcast where we talk your favorite sports debates, sports highlights, and sports matchups. And if you guys are watching, please make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you guys are listening to us, thank you guys so much. You know, we're everywhere, wherever you get your podcasts. And you guys could also check us out on social media, wherever you want. If, if it's on Facebook, if it's on TikTok, Instagram, we're everywhere. Also, if you guys want to check out our brand new website, who you got.com that's where we get all our latest info we got our podcast there our videos as well as the blogs that mellow has been doing a great job on and uh and oh, yes. all other news that you guys can get for who you got podcast and you guys can check out our patreon where we got some merch for you guys as well as some really cool uh stuff where you guys can ask us questions you guys can ask us topics but this week it's the start of the free agency march 13th and one of the biggest mm-hmm. storylines is happening as we speak. Melo, you want to take it away? Let them know what's going on in the world. Yes, man. Uh, obviously, NFL season really just felt like it just finished. Yep. Uh, we were just uh, going over the Chiefs versus Eagles, uh, talking about uh, what's been going on uh, in the playoffs. And honestly, I feel like we're still kind of watching the Chiefs celebrate yep. uh, <laughs> True. The, the Super True. Bowl win. Uh, but they don't even get a chance to breathe right into the off season. We already got some juicy drama and we're here to talk about it today. Today we are going to talk about Lamar Jackson. Um, Everyone woke up yesterday to the news that the Baltimore Ravens decided to franchise tag, non-exclusive tag uh, their quarterback after failing for over a year to come to an actual long-term deal with him. Um, So pretty much, uh, franchise tagging them, uh, the the specific type of tag they use, and obviously the simple fact uh, that they still have yet to come to a number that matches for both of them is definitely a lot of a lot of it raises a lot of big questions on what's going on between Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. It raises a lot of and that's definitely what we're here to talk about. Oh yes. Um, so I say let, let's start from the beginning. Uh, just kind of talk it out. Um, I don't know if people remember, but uh, uh, after. 2021 uh he got offered five year 250 million with 133 million guaranteed um and pretty much turned that down since then uh throughout the year last year uh he made it very clear that he did not want to talk um football or or did not want to talk extension talk only wanted to play football and didn't want that to be a concern He'll, he'll focus on that in the off season um pretty much uh, without that extension being played out, he played out his fifth year of his rookie contract and pretty much decided to make a, a bet on himself. Um, Baltimore Ravens, obviously, uh, I, I can at least say, because a lot of people are questioning what they're doing, but I can definitely say they do want to keep their quarterback. Hmm. Um, they just have a couple of different hands that they can play. And at the end of the day, they're making a bet on themselves as well. Uh, so right are, now you got both of them. They they are, and and I'm, I'm gonna lay it out how they how they really are. A lot of people really just think it's like just dumb not wanting to pay the money, but at the end of the day, they're playing their hand. Mm. Um, the same way Lamar played his hand last year, now they're playing their hand. So at this point, it really is Lamar Jackson's uh versus Baltimore, mm. and we we got to figure out the way. <laughs> Basically, that's that's what this off season is gonna be like. A lot of people thought that it was going to be uh, a lot of other quarterbacks we we're going to talk about but you know once this news came out everyone mm-hmm. wants to talk about this and it, it was surprising i would say like the the nfl world was surprised by it they didn't expect them to put a franchise tender on him where like they thought it was going to be an exclusive tag where you know everyone thought that they were just going to keep him on the team without him being able to go around and look at the market as well so that's that's interesting there as well. But tell us about like uh, the Ravens side of it. Like why why are the Ravens like making a a good deal on their part? So they they're basically playing their hand. Um, at the end of the day, believe it or not, and, and some people have made questions about it. Uh, the 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 Ravens have tried to draft to build a team that is uh, set for Lamar's talents. Um, unfortunately, they get just get hit with a lot of injuries. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
And and it and they do got a, a, a contending team. At the end of the day, they do got a, a a team that if everyone's healthy, they're gonna go to the playoffs. They're gonna make some noise. Um, how far they go, that's always a question. Right. Now, the reason why I say they are playing their hand and not technically just trying to get rid of their quarterback, this tag allows Lamar to actually see what teams are actually willing to offer. Right. Now, he's demanding a certain amount of money, and I've known we made a big deal about Watson's contract, exactly. Russell Wilson's contract, how Derek Carr just got a decent contract. Um, so I get we question all this money being thrown at quarterback, uh, but right now, I think that the Ravens are trying to show Lamar that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. So with this uh, this tag, it allows someone us to actually throw an offer. Granted, it's got to be matched with a couple of decent picks. Two first round picks. <laughs> so, Definitely, so, <laughs> it's a big price, but but then again, so is the contract. So exactly. So no one. But no then, one picks him up. No one offers him that much. Now it begins to question, what does Lamar do with the balls back in his court? True, but then the Ravens could always just match whatever offer anyone else wants to match him. At but, the end of the day. But here's my thing, though. Like, with this whole thing, him even playing his fifth-year option, just on his fifth-year option, not getting the deal done, I got to give this man a lot of credit. I know he he wasn't able to finish the season, and, you know, he did get injured this season. Um, it's it's a big risk playing on your fifth year option. A lot of people in the NFL world know this, but Lamar Jackson doesn't have an agent. He is his own agent. So some people are questioning whether this is really hurting him in the end or if he's making the right decision. Now you pointed out that the Sean Watson was the guy that everyone was looking at, and and that was the the real thing about this is Jimmy Haslam. He loved. Deshaun Watson so much, the the owner of the uh, Browns, he loved him so much that he gave him a fully guaranteed contract. And, and that was really the issue. Right now, what Lamar wants is that fully guaranteed contract from the Ravens. He doesn't want, you know, what they offered him. They offered him, like you said, 250 with 133 guaranteed, which is very similar to that Russell Wilson contract. It's, mm-hmm. it's around that 68%, 69% overall guaranteed. But he wants around. He wants that fully guaranteed contract, just like Deshaun Watson does. Um, now, do I think that Steve Buscemi, the you know, and and they're gonna give the Ravens are gonna give him that type of contract? Man, I don't I don't know if they want to really set a precedent. Now, you saw that one guy did it. Once one guy does it, you know, it's uh, it's anomaly. But once a few guys do it, you know, you get the second quarterback, the third and fourth are not gonna want unguaranteed contracts after that. So the Ravens. They're really trying to put their foot in the sand right now. It's like, no, we're not going to give you a fully guaranteed contract. No, and and, and for them, I, I think it it really comes down to more than that. Um, like I said, any team he goes to is not going to be as prepared to be the team built for him more than the Baltimore Ravens. Um, the only team I could honestly think of that will be Close is the New York Jets. I was just going to say that, too. That's funny. I was literally just going to say. The New York I, I Jets, with the defense they have, they, they honestly will be the perfect fit. But even then, good running game. it will still take a different type of, like, the, everything Everything will have to switch up for everybody for that to work. You know, So that would still be a little bit different just for the fact that coming back to Baltimore, everything will be the same. You still got to put Baltimore. But at the end of the day, the Jets are the only one that have the team. Um, so a lot of teams aren't going to not only give up that money, but give up those picks because if he's not the one piece that wins you now or wins you a championship now, is it worth it? I don't know. Now, I think it is because the the GM of the Jets literally just said, we are a quarterback away from winning a Super Bowl. That's what he said. So I think that a proven guy i mean yes you can say lamar jackson's had his injuries even throughout his college career into his nfl career he had two acl surgeries so that's a big risk you're taking on a guy but a proven guy that has gone to the playoffs four out of the five years he's been in the league and a super bowl mvp uh i would think that 
there should be some buzz in a league around for for that type of talent. See, I don't think there is, and, and that's why I think the the Ravens playing their hand. I think that they think that as well. Uh, he had what the uh, the MVP season, but you got you got to realize that season alone still he won thirteen for thirteen and twelve uh, two thirteen and three. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, he didn't. Oh, he that's didn't... right. He didn't start that one game. Okay. No, that was one game start. he didn't play. Yeah, it was thirteen and two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, throw for three, thirty one hundred yards, completion rating of sixty six percent, thirty six touchdowns, three interceptions. Right. I mean, that was a great. You year. do got to add the rushing stats in there too, though. A hundred percent, and those rushing stats are twelve hundred yards, uh, seven touchdowns. That's, that's a huge number right there, and that's that's a big reason why he was MVP for sure. Is those rushing stats? He was a hundred percent. He got the record that year for uh, most rushing yards in a year before uh, Justin Fields just beat him this year. But I mean, like, but you don't think that type of talent is worthy of of getting? Um, I mean, yes, I understand what he wants is a fully guaranteed contract, but you don't think that he's worthy of getting teams looking looking at him? As a top three type of salary guy, real quick. Oh no, he's definitely a, a franchise quarterback, okay. but it's, it's it's the amount yeah. that it's okay, worth. So like 2019 MVP season, uh, had a great campaign, uh, but he hasn't he hasn't come close to those those level or that level of play in two years. Uh, both years after that, you got injury problems, um, and at the end of the day. I don't know if you remember, but we actually had a conversation uh, about this in the beginning of the NFL season on when he decided to decline that extension. We had an episode on did Lamar Jackson make the right move betting on himself? Yeah, I remember that. And my my opinion was no. Yeah, I remember that. And mine was yes, actually. Yeah, because I've been saying the the level of running ability – uh, he's, we understand what he brings to the table. He's a, the, one of the best multidimensional players we've ever seen. But that level of running ability with those injuries that he's having in his legs is going to continuously drop. Uh, I'm not going to say an accolade he's a running back, but at the end of the day, running back's career are extensively short. Running quarterback's career are usually way shorter than that. So you add to the fact that he's missing multiple time because of injuries, uh, his running ability is going to start to to lower down a little bit. The problem with that is his passing ability is already, uh, already started off at average. Mm-hmm. Like he literally averaged, what is it? That that MVP season was a was a great year, but the man was still getting 200 passing yards a game that year. I get that. And his but... average is 100. And, is, is about like 220. Like he doesn't consistently average more than 250 passing yards a game, and we've seen what happened in the playoff. For four different appearances, he's only won one game. Is because for all four of those games, we've seen teams stuff that box force Lamar to throw the ball and find out that the Baltimore Ravens can't succeed when they have to well, pass. Well, that's definitely true. And this is this is the reason why I disagree with your earlier point where you said that like they built the team around Lamar Jackson because I really don't agree with that. I really believe that they built the team around the defense, and they always have. They always have been. And Baltimore has never been a team to really spend money to bring free agents in. They never have been, and they never brought in a big free agent throughout Lamar Jackson's tenure while he's been there. Mark Je- Mark Ingram was like the only free agent they brought in, and he was a backup running back at that. Uh, yes, they did They did have a lot of injuries, which, you know, that hurts any team, and especially their, their running back getting injured, J.K. Dobbins getting injured two years in a row, that 100% hurts him. But I kind of disagree that they, they were building a team around Lamar. They were always giving him – some washed up receivers like you know Sammy Watkins, you know. Like, I mean, I mean, we he had he had he had Brown for a while. He was good for one year. Hollywood Brown was good for one year, and he was still a young receiver. He was in his second year when he was good. So as I was saying, they try to draft because thing they can't get nobody to go there. That that's so they try. They, they have money. tried to draft, and at the end of the day, when you got a quarterback action for two hundred fifty guaranteed, how are they gonna get? talent around him so they do what they can mm. so get tight ends get yeah, linemen yeah. build the defense yeah. try to yeah, draft yeah. receivers to build the talent. like they have tried at the end of the day but the off the jets did exactly the same the thing. offensive Got line one one decent receiver no line a it's great not... defense and all they like they're one quarterback away that's what the baltimore ravens already yeah, but are the offensive line has always been a problem for them always past five years has always been an issue with with them and lamar's lamar even like said that during the one time that they got to the playoffs um, and 
and he didn't start the full game and RG3 had to finish for him when he got injured and during the playoff game he was even like complaining about the line that that whole year uh, he he's on oh, the first year in the playoffs he got sacked seven times in one game that was the year. second year he got sacked four was, times I, I think it was the second year actually yeah yeah it was, it was the second year but i mean i i kind of see what you're saying that they don't want to give him a fully guaranteed contract but the reason why i said that lamar jackson made a good decision last year is because i mean if he would have took the contract last year yeah he would have had that 133 but i mean you see what guys are getting now. Like Kyler Murray's getting more than Deshaun Watson. Yeah, it's not guaranteed, but Kyler Murray's uh, over that. Like he's at forty-six million average, and Russell Wilson's at two hundred forty-five million at forty-nine million average. You know, Aaron Rodgers getting fifty million a year. So, I mean, I don't see why a guy like Lamar Jackson, who's an MVP in his fifth year, has been to the playoffs so many times with a team that has been, I would just say, like more defensive driven to be honest they've never been offensive focused never have been in in this five-year career i think that he deserves guys in the nfl to look at him and i i know that something's going on because right when the ravens announced that they're giving them that franchise tag five teams came out on twitter and uh, i guess like all these reporters were asking them this question are you interested in lamar jackson now that he's got a non-exclusive franchise tag and five teams came out and said no the Ravens, Miami, Atlanta, Carolina Panthers, and I think uh, uh, another team from the NFC South said said that as well. Um, but I think Tampa Bay actually, yeah, Tampa Bay said that as well. So it, it's just insane that like within and 15 that's what minutes, I said, they're, because they and that's the thing. Obviously, it's not like people don't want Lamar, but they're the Ravens are basically showing Lamar like like one. I'll be honest. And it really is. It really is Watson's fault because that yep. fully guarantee yeah. makes no but is it his sense fault, after what he went is through. Is it his fault? No, it's it's the team's fault. But they like after what he went through, there's no way that he should have been the first one to get a fully guaranteed contract. So the fact that he set the precedent makes it so much worse because everyone's like, "You're wild." That man was out for a year and was about to be suspended for a whole another year, and they stay. They still gave him fully guaranteed. Every quarterback, including Lamar, is thinking, give me my money. Exactly. But at the end of the exactly. day, every team can't give you their money. They're both making business decisions. At the end of the day, I don't think the Baltimore Ravens' decision was, screw Lamar, like, you're out of here. I think it was, listen, hey, let's see what someone else has to offer. No one's going to offer a big enough deal to where they trade away the damn house. I don't see that coming. And anyone that offers a good enough deal, Ravens will match it. So – and at that point, that's what they have. So here's the thing: like we've or, we already know what the Ravens have offered Lamar and what he already declined. So we we know that he's gonna get something above that on the open market. It's gonna be above that. Yeah. And, and the only thing he's looking at, I know that he's looking at guaranteed money. He doesn't care about that total value of the of the salary. He wants that guaranteed. He literally wants two hundred thirty one million guaranteed. Uh, Deshaun Watson got two thirty, uh, and he wants that two thirty one. I kind of tend to agree with you where I don't think the NFL, they don't want to give it to him. I, I do kind of believe it's a little bit of collusion. It might not be, you know, what we see as collusion, like all the they, all the NFL owners came around and they talked to each other. But I think that they're all thinking it. they don't want to give another quarterback. Like I said, like one quarterback is an anomaly, but two starts a precedent. And then the next one, like you said, the next one and the next one, they're all going to want fully guaranteed contracts. And Herman Edwards, um, he's he was – a player and a coach in the NFL since the 70s and he even said that in the 70s the players were talking about fully guaranteed contracts and wanted those fully guaranteed but the owners never wanted to give the NFL players fully guaranteed contracts well, that's the thing it's not even about like I promise you right now right now if Patrick Mahomes went to the Chiefs and say yo I want I want to restructure and and I want mine fully guaranteed or if his year was up and he won the Super Bowl and new contract coming up and we talking and he says I want my fully guaranteed give that man fully guaranteed I'm not saying her saying I'm against any quarterback getting so you think fully only guaranteed. certain quarterback deserve it a hundred percent like you that had an MVP season have haven't haven't passed over uh three thousand yards since then uh haven't got to a thousand rushing yards since then consistently injured and failed both three years in a row in the playoffs I'm not giving you fully guaranteed money and that's sorry that's where we have to like that's where we would have to talk about the actual contract details, because I, I kind they of turned agree down one thirty three guaranteed. 
That, that's that what was they, the most. That, that was, was the most highest they were willing offer. to go. Uh, so at one thirty three, guaranteed. So what I'm thinking is his his total value is going to have to go down, and they're going to have to bring down like a year on on that contract if he wants a higher guarantee. Instead of getting a five year deal, kind of like Russell Wilson got with the Broncos, he's going to have to go for a four year deal. You know, he's going to have to get four years and and try to settle it that way. And um, you know. I mean, there's there's precedent though, because guys on the open market, Derek Carr just got paid forty million a year. Daniel Jones is getting paid forty million a year, and my man Lamar Jackson is getting paid thirty two on the franchise tag. So you, I mean, you're telling me that he is not worth more than these two guys, and, and guys are not like there's teams that are gonna pay him more than that. I think. No, and that's the thing. That's why I really believe that that exclusive or non-exclusive tag was to specifically allow the Ravens to somehow still end up with him. So you think either way, whatever he gets on the open market, the Ravens are po- like they're most likely going to bring they're him gonna back. They're going to match it because it's going to be less than what he wanted. So let's talk about that. Let's let's talk about Cuz he got three he, yeah, he got three options. Yeah. Negotiate, say, uh, talk about uh, his option. more expensive deal including the guaranteed money that he want with the Ravens. Uh negotiate a uh, a deal with the team which then the Ravens can match or exchange for two first round picks. Or negotiate uh, a deal with the team, uh, which the Ravens can match and then trade. Right, sign and trade. Um, exactly. Yeah. So. So. Uh, and at most, this point, it looked like the first one's really not happening. The first one is like ninety five percent not happening. To a deal. That's that. Yeah, it's not. Happening. That looks like it's definitely not happening. Um, I think that the relationship is so messed up with the Ravens right now. I really think it's so messed up. I think this whole past year has been messed up. I think that Lamar wanted his contract last year and yeah, he, you know what? He, he didn't want the 133. What what I was hearing from other sources was that he was looking at 180 fully guaranteed with the $250 million contract is what he wanted. But the Ravens didn't accept that. Obviously they, they were way like they were fifty million dollars away from each other, so they obviously couldn't, yeah. couldn't get anything done. So they were like, "All right, go go look on open market, see if anyone else is willing to pay you that. And if they are, then maybe we'll pay you. Maybe we will, or maybe we'll decide to get those first round picks, depending on who it is. Maybe it's a team like I don't know, just putting it out there: Chicago, Miami, like guys that have like picks in the early early first round." And maybe maybe the Ravens want to pick up a quarterback right away. You never know. So if if that's the case, then then you know that most likely that they could let him go for for something like a two hundred fifty million dollar contract. And that's why contract. if they feel it's worth it, that's to say they want to end up with him. Hmm. But if they're not going to end up with him, you're going to have to pay them. Because the sign and trade is interesting too, though. The sign and trade is very interesting because if you do like a. Cause they can get more than two first rounders. Yeah, I was gonna say, if he, but that's the only way you do that is if Lamar, if he gets a bigger fully guaranteed contract. That's the only mm-hmm. way that happens. If he gets like two hundred million fully guaranteed, then he gets traded for you know a, a couple picks and then a player or two. You know, then that's that's the best deal for the Ravens, obviously. Now, no, here's the thing though, like yeah, with with Lamar, do you think he wants to go back to the Ravens at this point? So that's the thing. I don't even think it's really that personal, um, because especially if you really? say Lamar is his own agent, like, bro, they like, he's trying to get his. They're trying to get theirs. They had good. They had five years of playoff contention. Um, really fizzed out. Like I said, when they get to the playoffs, like teams really just just shut them down. Uh, but even be, besides that, like it's not like they were just horrible together. Like they, I think what they were thirty-seven and twelve yeah. when Lamar was playing, so they were a, a contending team. At the end of the day, like they just not trying to give him his guarantee. So if he find a way to land somewhere where they can agree on a contract, or if he decides he wants a contract with another team and they match it, then I don't see him saying "screw y'all, I'm leaving." Unless, like, especially okay, if it's what if it's not the Jets? What if it's a team that really ain't that set up? Like, if at the end of the day, if you're gonna get the same money, you might as well stay with the Ravens. Yeah, but I don't think it's the same money though. I think fifth, like, we're talking like. No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about if. And that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, if if he signs with another, if another team offers a contract and he know that's where he's gonna fall on. Right, right, right. He, I, I, he might as well take it from the Ravens. Mm. So. It's, because at the end of the day, like, no other team is. But that's the thing. It's not. It's not up to him. It's up to the Ravens, though. It's all up to the and Ravens. No, and, I, and I think the Ravens. 
aren't doing all this to ship him off. That's what mm-hmm. I'm saying. So at the end of the day, I don't think the Ravens want to get rid of him. So it's up to Lamar on whether or not that relationship okay, so is think good or not. In their and eyes, I'm thinking he should think it as a, a business decision. Right. So, th- so you think in their eyes, they think that it's a really good relationship with him still. In his eyes, he th- he should think that it's just business, you know, no personal. Well, I think they both should think it's business. Cause at the end of the day, the Ravens is a business. 100%. He probably you're has right a there. good relationship with certain coaches and all that, but at the end of the day, the owner is going to do what's best for the business. That's true. And I still think on his end, being his own agent, he probably loves the Raven organization. He loves his teammates, loves the fans, but he still wants to get what he's worth. Yeah, and that's... So I don't think neither one of these are personal. So the relationship might not be mm-hmm. good. It's because they haven't... It's been over a year where they haven't been that's, able to find... Uh, that's exactly that's, where that's I... What, like, that's, that's what, what I was going like, to say, because that's why I disagree with... It, with what you're saying is like because i do think it's personal i think that this whole year has been personal i think for him being such a young mvp for him having the stats that he's had and he has gotten better playing in the pocket i mean even this year you saw he he definitely played better in the pocket he's taking steps but his offensive line just hasn't been there i just think that like if you look at the baltimore ravens as a whole like they've never paid free agents or they've never paid guys top dollar like if you if you look at the history of the top guys being like what what their money is it's never been from the ravens even if you look at guys like you, you know um ray lewis when he was one of the top linebackers he was never getting paid number one linebacker money it was always Earl locker getting paid above him because the ravens they're if you i mean we look at him as like a bigger market team because you know they they're flashy right now with lamar jackson but that's just because they got lamar jackson and they did win a super bowl with John Harbaugh, but or um, you know, back in uh, 2014, I believe it was with uh, Flacco, Fluco, as I yeah, call him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, 2014, and so yeah, so they have you know, they have their history with Ray Lewis, and then also the 98 Super Bowl as well when they they were there. Uh, I'm sorry, 2000 Super Bowl. Excuse me, 2000 Super Bowl. They were there against the Giants, um, but that history. It, it only has one good quarterback to talk about, and that quarterback is Lamar Jackson. Like, you can't say that. he. You could say already in his fifth year, he is better than any quarterback in the history of the Ravens. So for, for a guy that's been one of the youngest MVPs, they should have been offered him a contract similar to what uh, Russell Wilson got with the 180 fully guaranteed, you know, something like that. That's what they should have offered him, not the 133 guaranteed where – you know, if he gets injured, he's only getting paid like twenty million a year. Like and that's what would have happened this year if he would have taken that. Luckily he, he did stay on his uh fifth year option and I mean I think that it's a good thing for him because now he's gonna get more guaranteed than he would have gotten last year. Because we know that he wasn't gonna get that type of contract that Watson got last year, but I think that he wants to set a precedent for the rest of the guys in the league, and that's why I love what Lamar Jackson is doing. I'm just very proud of him and for him sticking to his guns not getting the agent and actually telling them like look i want that fully guaranteed contract well that's the thing like for me it's just like the numbers just don't make sense that you gotta think about it 2019 second year in mvp season 2020 a little bit of a fall off but at the end of the day the ravens didn't get worse they probably didn't i think aj brown was his first year he's starting to get a little start like a little bit of a fall off but still 11 and 4 uh, 2,700 yards, uh, 1,000 yards rushing. That's a rookie. That's rookie um, numbers. Like, I mean. No, that's his third oh, year. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because the yeah, second year was uh, 1,200 season, and the, the third year was. Yeah, second sorry, year the first was, year he had 900 uh, rushing yards, right? He was almost at that 100. He was um, almost at that 1,000-yard mark. No, he only had 700 oh, the first it? year. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as I say, so the first year he had 700 right. rushing, yeah. uh, 1,200 passing, but he only played seven games. Right, that's what it was. Yeah, seven games. MVP season. 3,100 yards, 36 touchdowns, 1,200 rushing, seven rushing touchdowns. Next year, A.J. Brown's there, but the team isn't – he just falls off a little bit, but it, it doesn't look too bad. They still go 11-4, uh, 2,700 yards, 26 touchdowns, nine interceptions with 1,000 yards rushing. So at that point, now we're coming up to his fourth year. Mm-hmm. Injured for a few games, they go 7-5. and five. The games he play, seven and five in the games he play. Right. He throws for twenty eight hundred yards, and in those twelve games, he throws for sixteen touchdowns, and thirteen picks. That's the year 
he decides to fight for his life. That year fell off, and I think that year he only had uh, 767 yards. But you, you do remember with only two touchdowns. You do remember so, like what said, happened he got in the first game of the year, though. Like J.K. Dobbins, he went out of the first game of the year. Their running back literally like went out, and they had nobody. So that's what I'm saying. So at that point, now you got to rely on that MVP quarterback. He still won seven and five. He still won seven and five. Sixteen touchdown, thirteen picks. I get you had that. a thirty-six touchdown season, a twenty-six touchdown season. Like, what's well, we, like? And I, we and talking I about a one-dimensional like, team at that point. But at that point, they also got AJ Brown, and we're starting. This uh, is more Hollywood, like, Brown. Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown. Not AJ. Yes, I'm sorry. Hollywood. But, I'm sorry. I keep saying AJ. But Hollywood uh, Brown but was point, also injured that year, actually. Hollywood but he Brown was injured for the full year. No, he was injured like week five, something like that. But still, yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. That, was, that year was a wash. The there's a lot of circumstances, but that's the year in the offseason he decides and he sees Watson get his fully guarantee. True. That he decides we're not we're not staying at 133. Then, unfortunately for him, he gets injured again in 2022. Only puts up 2,200 yards, 17 touchdowns, and it's like I get that you want your money. But you're you're like the passing to me hasn't improved. He his rushing just by pure injury is going to go down. Just by pure lifeline, like his he's a running back's only lasts for so long. So it's like if you don't improve how you are staying in the pocket, like how can you sit here and demand that money? And that's the thing. Like I get both sides, but at the end of the day. I do not sit here and fault the Baltimore Ravens for not giving him that fully guaranteed contract. Like I said, if, if Pat Mahomes was the one asking for that money right now, I would have no problem. Yeah, and you man, know what? That, your, that... Your, your, your ankle injuries haven't even kept you. like. And I think you could blame the line, you could blame this. But then why would they give you all that money to not be able to fix up a line? You know what I'm saying? Like, Okay, you, that, gonna... that I definitely get. That I definitely get. But here's, here's the thing. like The way that they're treating him, they're trying to pay him – what like in between Dak Prescott and Daniel Jones? That's what they're trying to pay him. They're not trying that to pay him. That one thirty three would have made him second of all time behind. No, not all time, but second behind uh, Watson. The total value, the total value. Oh. But I'm talking about the the guaranteed money. The guaranteed money would have put him in between Daniel Jones and Dak Prescott. You know, so Daniel's is at eighty eight million. Dak Prescott is at one hundred forty million guaranteed. So. Those are two guys that you can really look at right now. Derek Carr got like seventy million guaranteed, um, so those are really the the two guys. And also, I'm sorry, Josh Allen, Josh Allen as well. He's at, but he's a little bit higher than him. He's at 100. With that extension, seventy. Yeah, he's at 170 guaranteed. But still, like the top, the other top guys that got the contracts, you know, that are higher guaranteed are the top guys. You know, Rogers. You would think Mahomes, which is one of them. But then there's Russell, Murray, and Watson. So you tell me the Lamar is not better than those three guys? He is, but just because those teams made bad business decisions don't mean that every other team now has to follow suit. And that's my whole point. There ain't no way Washington should have got that money. Ain't no way. And Wilson don't even look that bad when you look at his resume. It just and we have to have a whole conversation about this, but he fooled the goddamn world for a couple years into just a whole nother dimension. But there are quarterbacks who deserve that money, and there aren't quarterbacks. But the last couple of years, we've been seeing teams get desperate, throw the money at quarterbacks. And so, like, now each side are starting to for- get further apart on what they want. And so I was just saying, like, I get it for both that's, sides, but that's why just because the they paid strange. all that money, and you might be right on that. Um, yeah, you might be right. I think that, to be honest, like, I think that they they are, like, if, if they would have wanted to keep him, they would have just kept him on that franchise tag. Plus, the franchise tag would have been a little bit less than the exclusive. Like they would have, it would have been like 0.8 million less. So they would have only pay him 32 million exactly, um, and they would have kept him on the team this year. It would have been just a franchise tag, and he would have had to play under the franchise tag, or he would have sat out, and you know, sat out of training camp and maybe even like games until he got a contract. But we don't know that. But if they really would have wanted to keep him, I think that that was that. That's what they would have done. I think what they wanted to do is they want to let him test the waters and they're hoping the team doesn't give him more than like 150 fully guaranteed with that 250 million dollar contract that's what they're hoping well that's the thing i think that 
they're doing this like that because they know they're not giving him what he wants. But at the end of the day, if a team come close to second, and that's then they know that's what they have to give him to keep him because there ain't that that's the best he can get. That's why I said like they're they're playing their hand. Um, and at the end of the day, I think if a team makes a good enough offer, they're just gonna end up keeping him. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna I think a hundred percent they're gonna allow him to or not just allow him but pretty much sign a more expensive deal with another team and then match and then keep him. I'll be honest, man. I'll be I'll be so on. I I think it's gonna be so weird if he's on the Ravens again. If we ever see him in a Ravens jersey, I think it's gonna be weird. I think it. I think that the relationship is strained. I think that, to be honest, the relationship is done. And I think that even if another team offers them something or, you know, offers Lamar something and the Ravens say, all right, you know what? We're going to match that offer, but we're going to match it and then we're going to trade you to that team again. We're just going to take more picks from them instead of two first rounders. We're going to take four first rounders, you know, if you want that much guaranteed. I'll be honest. I really think the relationship is strained. I don't think Lamar wants to play in Baltimore anymore. Um, obviously, he wanted to go home play in Miami, but Miami said that they don't want him. And Carolina <laughs> and Atlanta, the first thing that came a out of their mouth. Like, need him. But before, like, well, no, they need him, but I'm, they don't want to pay for that. Yeah, yeah, but but then then again, they got a quarterback out there too who's been getting injured like just as much, and he's definitely not as good as Lamar. Um, and they don't want to pay him because they're gonna have to pay him next year anyways. And Tua Tunga by Loa. But then again, like you got guys like Carolina, Atlanta that need quarterbacks, and why are you gonna come out and say before free agency even starts, you're not even gonna look at this guy? He's a super, or he's a MVP in the league, you know, regular season MVP, and you're not gonna even take a look at this guy as a free agent? Like, come on now, like that that seems like there's some collusion going on in the NFL. Teams are talking to each other, you know, they're probably telling each other like this is what's going on. Not I'm even because of if. It- because last year, if, if Watson agents asked, asked the other 31 teams for 250 guaranteed, they all would have told him no. That that I, I agree with. I agree with you is. there. Because I don't think. And now Lamar Jackson, who's been injured for two years, is now demanding a price tag that there's teams are right away. It's like, no, no, I'm not paying that. And and no, I get that. That's gonna... And maybe that fully guaranteed, I don't think he he's even going to get that because I really believe the NFL doesn't want to set that precedent. So I kind of agree with you there. I don't think that any team is going to give him that. But. What about like like I was saying like he was at 180 is what he wanted the Ravens to give him. They said no. They offered him 130. Do you think that he's ever going to get something like 180 fully guaranteed from any team? I mean, Rogers at 150. Um, yeah, but that was a three year deal. He's looking for a five year deal. Lamar. Right, that's what I'm saying. I really, I really see 150 being the highest some team will go with five years. Mm. Because Rodgers is the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. He's getting paid $50 million a year. Technically, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a three-year saying, quarterback. That, that, I was saying that, one, that 150 to 160 is going to be hard for a team to offer, have to offer that guarantee. Um, so you think it's a three-year a three year deal that a team is going to offer, possibly? They're gonna, they have to. You know what? That's that's actually no – That's what I'm saying. No one's going to keep trying to give him that money for five years with the injuries. Damn. That's the problem. You know what? So if a team does offer him that, then – then he probably did make he a might mistake. Have no choice but to take it. Yeah. He made a mistake, but I I believe he's gonna get that five year. He'll get that five year, like close to two hundred and forty, but not the guarantee that I was talking about. Probably something like one seventy is what I'm thinking. And that's the thing; it's not even personal to me. I play Madden franchise too much. I know when a bad de- business decision is staring at me, man. I, I, I. I get it, but man, li- listen, like that man is injury prone. So man. so imagine this. So so listen to this. Imagine if Lamar Jackson was on the Buffalo Bills. I mean, the the way that their team is set up, I think that, that they have a great offensive line. They have a, a type of offense that's similar they, to Lamar Jackson. They'd be exactly where they're at right they now. They are, but they're very similar to Lamar Jackson because that's Josh Allen definitely does those like you know. Uh, uh, no, they would be where now. They actually be less off because Josh Allen's a way better passer and he could still run. At the end of the day, what they're missing is a legit running back to take the pressure off Josh Allen. They ain't no way in hell that Lamar Jackson is a good enough passer to take the pressure off himself. 
Man. If you have no running game, you just don't trust Lamar. Like as a, not as at a all. franchise not quarterback, a, a franchise passer. Yeah, wow. It's the, it's the passer. See, I just, like, my man's literally do, averaged man. 250 I, his whole career. Like his MVP season was an MVP season because it's rushing. Now you're adding ankle injury after ankle injury, and the rushing has no choice but to go down, and your passing has not improved. Why are we paying you all this money? Because he's a, he's an MVP. He's shown that he can win. Former. He's shown. He's a former. He 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 showed that he could win. I get that, but I mean, you guys, you, you got guys getting paid forty million a year. Yeah, it's not guaranteed, like we were talking about. But Daniel Jones just got paid four years, forty million. Hey, Derek Carr. Let the let, let the Patriots let the Patriots and uh let the where did uh, Derek Giants Carr go, and uh the Saints for the for Derek Carr. And Saints, that's right. Giants, like oh those. Jones, you did say Jones. That's yeah, right. But Jones yeah, but let the let the Giants let, let them let, let's say let them make their decisions. Like you can't like we can't expect Baltimore to give a uh, injury a uh, injury ridden quarterback who's hasn't showed that type of of play because we're not gonna act like he had everything he needed in his MVP season he didn't either but he showed yeah, out yeah he was the main focus of that offense and I, I'll yeah, be honest he man showed out but then remember he got right to the playoffs and got. I, yeah he did got scraped he did he he had terrible passing numbers there and he definitely. They threw for like 150 bunch. yards or something. He did, yeah. It was like 140, uh, actually. But, yeah, terrible. No, literally, but, it was, yeah. But the second time of him, uh, the first time he won a game in the playoffs, he did have over 200 yards. And that was his issue. Remember, like, his first two playoff games, he didn't have over 200 yards in each game. And finally, he was able to. And I, I'll i be honest, I do believe that he's getting better as a passer. The issue with the Ravens has always been like they they need stuff around them, and they've always had those injury problems. The especially J.K. Dobbins that has been a huge injury for them. Their number one running back two years in a row getting injured that doesn't help your team at all, because now you're you become one sided. Uh, you know Lamar has to do most things on his own, and then you know when he starts running more than more than a running back, you know he was getting this year he was getting like twenty rushes a game, and that's why he got injured. So. You know, if they actually had a good running back that wasn't getting injured, this team could have been a lot better. I don't believe that the Ravens were really focused towards the offense. They were always focused towards defense. Like, yeah, they drafted good, but they never spent money for for good offensive players, even good offensive linemen. But, I mean, let's uh, go over the question here. Like, you know, who do you think is the problem here? Do you think that which side do you think has to step back and be like, all right, we're going to concede. We're going to concede. Who do you think has to concede in this in this situation? Lamar, I'm just thinking. I, uh, yeah, the one who's averaging 200 passing yards and one touchdown a game for the last two years. That's the one I'm going to have to. Actually, let me look at these stats. Let's make it 1.5 touchdowns a game and make it the last three years. But you got to count rushing as well, though. Come on now. You got to count that. If you count rushing touchdowns throughout that, come on now. No. That, that no, no. adds a whole other dimension. So he's he's not even – he's averaging – the 2020 year he came off his MVP season, he got seven touchdowns. The last two years he got five combined. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's not as effective as a rusher, which I don't expect him to be. Hmm. But what I do expect – is that pat like at the end of the day, I, I'm not impressed by all that rushing if you can't not throw. You're a quarterback. We could just throw a freaking running back in the backfield if we expect you to just run. I love having the multi dimension aspect of being able to run. I love being a prolific runner. And, and, and he's one of the best runners that we've ever seen. But at the end of the day, no one's scared of Justin Fields and how many damn yards he's running because he can't throw the damn ball. But I mean that's that's the hope is they get better as passers. That's definitely the hope. But the question is like, do you think the, the we can remember like a top wide receiver the the Ravens have had in the past five years? Like, can you remember like a top? Because I'll be honest, I really can't name a top wide receiver they have had. And Hollywood Brown, no. he was good for a year, but he wasn't a top wide receiver. He had over a thousand yards one year, but he was never a top wide receiver. The Ravens, so oh, like uh, they had Brashad Bateman for that for that uh, one year, and he got close to a thousand yards. But they've never had a number one receiver that Lamar Jackson could really throw to, and that's been their problem. Yeah, they had Mark Andrews as their tight end, but never 
a number one wide receiver in the past five years. And I think that's a huge problem. Like you got, this is literally why the bills brought in digs is because if you remember Josh Allen's first few years, people were asking, Oh, can he actually throw? Cause he's not throwing over 4,000 yards. He's at like 3000 yards throwing and they brought in a number one wide receiver and it changed everything up. Oh, so I, I can I can understand that that plays a part, but I'll be honest and like, like I, I watch the games, not every game, but like, I can't sit here and act like him not having the number one and top, top notch receiver is the issue, when I watch how he just missed receivers. I understand that then there's a lot of plays that could be all right. The receiver, if it was a better receiver, might be a little bit more open, a little bit uh, better release, obviously better hands. Like I get it, and I think at one point, uh, one of and it might have been uh, Hollywood, but they was talking about uh, one of his top receivers just seemed to drop a lot, and I think that was the year after his MVP season. Yeah. Um, so I think it was Hollywood. So it I, I I I see that, um, and I and I understand that, but also I still. Like I'll never like, like just like. And I'll be honest, they they made they made some mistakes on those picks too. Like it, they picked up like Hollywood Brown was a decent pick for a year, but like I said, he's been off the other three years that he's been in the league. The other pick that they had, uh, which was a number one, uh, sorry, a first round pick, was Devin Duvernay, and he didn't pan out at all. He was one of their worst picks that they've made. No, and that's the thing, well, they so. tried to draft receiving talent and they're bad at it they're Lamar. always good at and drafting a, defense they're always yeah, good at drafting they tried. defense and then they try to bring in running back to help they actually had like four decent running backs for the last couple of years with all, all injury prone yeah. and that's the thing like i was saying they, and they try to pick up linemen um well, there's no, no linemen they to come to baltimore they barely try to pick up linemen i'll be honest it's like lamar's always had like and that line has always been bottom half of the league he's always had sack problems and and not just outside the pocket sack problems inside the pocket sacks if you if you uh look at his numbers he's always had especially his first three years in the league they were they were terrible at that i mean even even this year they were bad but he they did get better you know the previous year when he was seven and five as a starter but you know just this year they were bad that's one huge reason why he was injured and I'll be honest, like they, they never focus on that part of the of the line. Like that's that's why like he has to if you remember early in his career they were saying like, Oh, he has to, you know, run it because that line always is broken. Oh it's always broken. Nah, um you know me. I'm double checking. Yeah, 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 for sure. But I mean like Yeah, now they, they, they try to draft one, two, three For mm-hmm. so they try to draft five linemen in the last five years, but it doesn't seem like they're getting opportunities to get their top notch linemen. They're not like top picks. Twenty twenty, they're not top picks. Twenty twenty two was the only one they got a role like, and it was Kyle Hamilton. And that was like what, like a first, second rounder, probably. Oh no, I'm tripping. Kyle Hamilton's actually defense. No, you're right. You're, I'll give it to you. They do spend um, a lot of their picks on defense. On de- that's, that's what they always. Yeah. yeah. So since since they drafted Lamar, they Ozzie drafted, uh, Hayden Hurst, Hayden Hurst, the tight, tight end. end. Yeah. First round picks. Yeah, yeah. Next year, Marquise Brown, Hollywood, obviously. Yep. Um. Yeah. After that, they had one. Uh. First round pick. JK they picked Dobbins. the linebacker. Okay, linebacker. Yeah. yeah. Second round was J.K. Okay, Dobbins. Second round was J.K. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The year after that. Another wide right receiver, Bateman. Shaw Bateman. Um, and then really a defensive end. Yeah. And then last year, they pick an offensive lineman okay. and a defensive. So, the, so they yeah. have been mixing it a little bit. So that's what I say. I've seen them try to build the talent, but you're right. They're picking horribly. But that's the thing, picking though. Like they're, they're picking all these players, hoping that they're going to pan out, hoping that they're going to pan out. But they're not bringing anybody in. Like Sammy Watkins yeah. was the biggest name that they've had on offense. And and Mark Mark uh, Ingram, you could say, but like I said, he was like a he was a backup running back, really. But I mean, that's they needed to spend some more money, I believe. And I don't know. I think I think uh, it's the Ravens' fault why all this is going down, man. They they should have been they should have gave him his money. They should have gave him his money. Like I I agree with you. I will agree with you here. I will con- confess that I don't think that they should have gave him 
Deshaun Watson money. Okay, I I agree with you there. But why not? Like, yo, the NFL has never been fully guaranteed. But why not? Why why aren't quarterbacks fully guaranteed? I mean, they're the they're the number one guy in the field. They're literally the most popular position. And you know what? You can't tell me that Lamar Jackson doesn't sell tickets. And you know num- what owners love? They love money. And you can't tell me that if uh, he doesn't. You know, Oh come on now! If the Carolina Panthers look had me, Lamar Jackson right now, you know Carolina why he Panthers. Sell tickets? You, you tell know me why that he doesn't sell tickets. What is it? Say it again. You know why he doesn't sell tickets? Because he's not on the field. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but when but not nah, just just his likeness. They could sell his jerseys. They could sell they could sell tickets. Just the hype around him being you know there in the beginning of the season. If he was on the Carolina Panthers right now or the Atlanta Falcons. We can name whatever team. You would watch 100% one of the first games. You would 100% watch. Yeah, but how much closer would they be getting to winning a Super Bowl with only adding Lamar Jackson and, and giving up the farmhouse to get it? So that's Honestly, the question, the though. Honestly, the Jets but... is the only team I see really realistically needing so the, him the, to put him over that bump. The question is, how hard is it to find a quarterback in the NFL, a franchise quarterback? And to me, it's very hard. Very hard. There's only five of them, maybe. And I'll be honest, like, Lamar Jackson is on the cusp of being a franchise quarterback. I don't think he's – like, I yeah. think he's For just me, I need a him franchise. To get passing, yeah. The running is uh, amazing. The decision-making, like, I just need a little bit better passing, and then I I, I wouldn't be mad at everything. Mm. So let's uh, let's uh, pretty much uh, bring this back into a bow right here and pretty much uh, finish it off. Uh, the last question, I mean – um. You know, we want to pretty much ask, you know, whose side are you on? Are you on Lamar's side? Do you agree with what he's doing? Do you agree with, you know, him not having an agent, him going his own way, trying to do what he can to get his fully guaranteed? Or are you with the Ravens, letting him do his, letting Lamar do his thing, not giving him any guaranteed, not even signing him before he's a free agent, pretty much? I see who you got, who you got. Yeah, let me know who you got. Ravens or Lamar? That's what I want to know. I think it's been clear for me. Yeah, I mean, since pretty last much year, since clear. last year, when this only first turned down uh, that two hundred fifty mil, one hundred thirty three guaranteed, I said that was a big mistake. And now at this point, I do not know the Ravens' full intention, uh, but I think they might be trying to work this out with the possibility that they still keep him, just without having to pay him what he wants. Um, and I don't think that they want to get rid of him. I think that they keep on being a playoff contention team with him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do not think that he's worth that money. And I do not think that the Ravens are making a mistake by giving him the non-exclusive tag, mm-hmm. um, allowing other teams um, to negotiate. I think they're playing a very good hand. What about you? And Who you got? For me, I, I got to say, I disagree with you. I got to clap for Lamar Jackson, man. Lamar, listen, do your thing. The NFL is a tough sport. The toughest sport, probably. I mean, maybe we could put rugby in there, but the toughest sport in the world. The This is the sport where people get injured. You know what the NFL is, uh, is really named for? It's not National Football League. It's not for long. And, you know, people get injured. Go get your money, Lamar. Get that fully guaranteed contract while you can, while you have any type of leverage. Get as much fully guaranteed as you can because you know that I think that the NFL teams have been talking to each other a little bit prior to uh, them putting out this franchise tag because how the hell would 15 minutes after, 15 minutes after this happened, the Atlanta Falcons went on their website and they said, oh, we're not going to look at Lamar Jackson because of, uh, we're looking at cap stipulations and we want to be cap friendly been, around our team. Been posting stuff about Lamar and where he's going to go and you know how fans are. Fans have been acting like the Falcons are going to get Henry and Lamar. And, and why not? And honestly, why not? Why not? Why? Why shouldn't they? With that much, oh, what, that much cap yeah, they space, do that lot of money, with that yeah. much cap, why shouldn't they? Honestly, uh, yeah, they might have to trade out, trade away their first round pick if they want to do that. You know, because that that's a lot of money. But yeah, like if I was if I was a team owner, I get what the team owners are thinking. The team owners are thinking we're not gonna set the precedent. We're not gonna give this man a fully guaranteed because then after that you got Justin Herbert coming, you got Joe Burrow coming. 
you know, they're going to want fully guaranteed after that too. And then it's not going to stop. So I get where the owners are coming from. They're not going to have, they, they already saw one guy do it and everyone was frowning upon Jimmy Haslam and the Brown organization for doing that. And they didn't want that to happen. And now they don't want it to happen with Lamar. And for me, I think it's kind of sad. Cause like I said, I think this is the toughest sport to play in. Uh, people get injured so quick and your money gets lost just like that. And I think this is the time for Lamar to try to get his money and try to get it as fast as he can. Get as much guaranteed, baby. That's what I say. He's just not that guy. I mean, you know what? He's not that guy, pal. The, one of the youngest MVPs in the league. I think the youngest MVP ever. And that MVP guy and, and the guy who's asking for that money, not even the same person. I mean, it. Like I, it's hard to say he's not. Uh, like he, I don't think his prime is over. I think he has ability to switch up his game a little bit. Uh, Put him on the Jets. We'll see a different story. But oh, man, when I don't know if we're ever gonna see that Lamar Jackson. Put him on Miami. We'll see a different story. Put him in warm. I in, honestly in warm, uh, would love to see him shake up the AFC East on the Jets. Yeah. I would absolutely love because they really are. They actually had a winning record this year. And did they make the playoffs or they almost made the playoffs? The Jets almost made the playoffs. They were they had a winning they record. Almost, they were 9 they were, and, right, they were yeah. 9 and 8. They were right there on the cusp yeah. of the playoffs. So honestly, they give them an actual good quarterback. And that's what they're yeah. looking for. The Jets right now, they're looking for a quarterback, but there's another guy right now that's that they're hinting towards. So we don't really know if it's going to be Lamar. I mean, obviously the Jets are hinting towards Aaron Rodgers, so, but w- are they going to pay Aaron that money as so well? That's the thing with Aaron, he wants the the same he wants the contract that he already has with Green Bay. Basically, he wants to keep right. his contract without Green Bay cutting him cuz uh if Green Bay was to keep him up until June 26th, then they would have to pay him 56 million. But if they don't keep him by then and they trade him, then they would only pay him, or the other team would pay him 50 million. But another team that would be amazing for Lamar, I'll be honest. I just thought about it like literally right now. I wasn't even thinking about it throughout the episode. Tampa Bay Tampa Bay in that warm weather Ooh, with those receivers and that decent offensive line where you saw Brady, he wasn't really getting sacked this year. Honestly, yeah. That, uh, but didn't you say they said no? All the teams said no. Everybody pretty much yeah. said no. There was like five teams that said no. I would say Tampa Bay really honestly wouldn't be bad um, if, if Tom Brady's really serious. True, true, true. true. Um, that boy better not come back for the love of God. <laughs> Just give it up, give it up. Um, but yeah, no, honestly, you know, uh, Mike Evans is number one. Um, couple good slots, great defense. And uh, granted, I don't know if Leonard Fournette still got that juice. They cut him. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say <laughs> that boy was getting a little. Yeah, slow. but they, they got the young boys uh, out there, you know. That I was about was... to say, we, I think uh, what was his name? He got injured. Um, but yeah, if they make a, a decent hold at running back position, mm-hmm. um, trying to think who they got at running back. Yeah, yeah, that's a decent team. Yeah, it wouldn't. Yeah. It really wouldn't be bad. I mean, there's like you said, their defense is still great. I mean, they they still have a good offensive line. They still have those those two good receivers. Still, I I think that would be a really good option for them. I'll be honest. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I like that. White, I think you're talking about. Uh, right? Yeah, yep, that's what it was. Yep, Rashad White. Yeah, they injured, they yep. even had like uh, Keyshawn Vaughn, who was a decent like rookie at the at this level. So he's going to be a second running back. No, so I was they, saying, they got a decent they, squad. They had decent running they got backs. A decent squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just to you know to finish this off, to put a bow on it. You're going with the Ravens in this situation. Oh yeah. And I'm going with Lamar. And you're going with Lamar. Wow. You know what? I really didn't expect this at all. I really thought you were going to go with Lamar in the beginning of the episode. I thought you were going to go with me, but. <laughs> That's crazy how nah, it goes. Nah, man, they uh, I I like but I, I get said, it. it's just it's just not him. I get your points. It's not it's not the issue of the fully guaranteed. It's who asking for it. That's just it for me. I get your points. I get it. You're saying he's not Patrick Mahomes, but I'm saying he doesn't have to be to get that money. I'm saying he should. He be. should. He should. But not when you got Daniel Jones getting. I know. <laughs> Forty million man. a year. So. Well, that's the NBA too, boy. <laughs> Rudy Gobert getting traded for five picks. What? Yeah. Like, That's, come you know, on. KD got like six, I mean, all those players and all those picks as well with the second rounders. Yeah. That's what happens. So I'll be honest. Like, 
I think it might be a sign and trade for Lamar in the future. That's that's my last prediction. Yeah, it might be a sign and trade. Yeah, you might be right, man. man. Uh, now that we really talked about it, there might be no going back. Yeah, there just might be no going back. So you we'll might see be right. though. We'll see. Either way though, I I definitely think you might be. You're right about that guarantee. They're not giving him that, and no team is gonna. I think you're definitely right about that. But let us know what you guys think about this whole situation, Lamar Jackson. Versus the Ravens, versus the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, a lot, a lot of stuff to unpack here, and I'm glad we did. And let us know what you guys think down below. Please comment, and make sure you guys subscribe to that video. And if you guys are listening, make sure you download the podcast wherever you get it, and subscribe to the channel. We love every single one of you guys, so thank you guys for following along with us. If you guys want to check us out on our Patreon page, that's where you guys can type in your questions or put in like a topic that we can put on the podcast if you just want to give us some general support or there's uh the higher tiers where you guys can get some other uh extra stuff and exclusive stuff like we do some extra podcasts in there and, and add some extra videos in the patreon for you guys so definitely check us out there and we got the new website as well Melo, tell them about the website Oh, yes, www.whoyougotpodcast.com. We got blogs, we got episodes, we got videos, and soon we'll be having a Patreon all set up there, too, so you can get a little bit better of an idea uh, of the support we offer. Um, so we definitely just want to make sure you guys have everything available uh, just at your fingertips in one crucial uh one central place and obviously uh we we got normal merch as well uh just to make sure if you want to rock some who you got gear you can go ahead and show that support oh yeah oh yeah and it's real dope you guys definitely got to check out the merch definitely real dope oh yes <laughs> just in time for the spring and exactly. summer exactly uh once fall come around you know we're gonna switch up that lineup mm -hmm. of course definitely definitely going to, we're gonna give you guys a new collections every season baby this is like a fashion empire we're building too <laughs> That's along with the sports empire so thank you guys again for watching this episode and we'll check you guys on next episode of who you got with Melo. Colorado. peace y'all peace